So in this video, we're going to look at the same situation as we were looking at in the previous video. So the same block, uh, 2 kilos, width of 0.5 metres, height of 0.2 metres. Uh, we've got a rough um, ground where the coefficient of friction is 0.4. So all that's the same. The only thing that's different is that the force being applied to the corner uh, is now at an angle of 30 degrees to the vertical. So, part A, find the range of values of P such that the box will begin to slide across the ground. So for part A, I'm going to resolve vertically, taking upwards as positive. So we have R, then we've got the vertical component of the P-Newton force here. So if we break that up into its components, this will be P sine 30, and this will be P cosine 30. So the vertical component will be P cosine 30. So plus P cosine 30. And then take away 2G is going to be equal to 0. OK, so that implies then that the normal reaction force is going to be equal to 2G take away P cosine 30. So now we can use that the friction is going to be equal to mu times r, so 0.4 times r. So 0.4 times 2g take away p cosine 30. So that's my friction. Now I'm going to resolve horizontally, taking to the right as positive. So I've got the p sine 30. And then take away the friction, which is 0.4 times 2g take away p cosine 30. And I need this equal to 0. OK. Once I've figured out what p is from that, I can say, well, p has to be greater than that value. So the p value that solves this uh, will keep the acceleration at zero, so it will still be at rest. It'll be on the point of moving. OK, so uh, we have P times sine of 30 take away 0.8G plus 0.4P cosine 30 is zero. So P is going to be equal to 0.8G divided by sine of 30 plus 0.4 cosine 30. So I've done a couple of steps in one there um, by factorising the P value out, dividing through by the sine 30 plus 0.4 cosine 30. So putting in 0.8 times 9.8 divided by sine of 30 plus 0.4 times cosine of 30 and we get 9.2626 etc newtons so uh, if p is greater than 9.26 to 3 sig fig then uh, the block the box sorry will slide across the ground OK, so part B. Find the range of values of P such that the box will begin to topple. Now, if it starts to topple, it's going to start toppling around point A. Now, that will then be the point that the box is in contact with the surface. So the normal reaction force needs to go through A. So we're going to take moments about point A. Now, if it's equal to zero, if the total moment about point A is zero, then um, there's no turning effect. So we can work out what P is in that case, and then if P is greater than that, then that will be a turning effect, and that's what will create the toppling motion. So we are 0.25 metres away from 2G, and that's going in an anti-clockwise motion, so that's going to be positive. So 0.25 times by 2g. Right, then we've got the horizontal component of the P-Newton force. 
um, and that's 0.2 meters away, and that's going to be going in a clockwise motion. So take away 0.2 times by p sine 30. We don't need to worry about r and f and the friction because they're both acting foo a anyway. The only other force is the p cosine 30, which is working vertically, and that's 0.5 meters away. That's going in a clockwise motion. So take away 0.5 times p uh, cosine 30, and that's going to be equal to zero. So p is going to be equal to, we've got the 0.25 times 2g, divided by factorizing that, 0.2 sine 30 plus 0.5 cosine 30. So I've done a couple of steps in one there, as I did before. So 0.25 times 2 times 9.8, and then divide that by 0.2 times sine of 30 plus 0.5 times cosine of 30. And we get 9.193, etc. So if P is greater than 9.19 to three significant figures, then the box will begin to topple. Now, the key bit about this is that 9.19 is less than 9.26. So that's telling me that the block, the box, or the block, the box is going to start toppling before it starts to slide. Okay, so it will topple first, um, so it won't actually slide across the ground.